Hello everyone, Joseph Buer here. It's been a while since I've put out a video. Uh, I've been busy with a lot of projects lately, but um, one of the projects I'm working on calls for me to give braids to a character. And um, I've, one of the things I've been trying to do is to create a brush in ZBrush that will allow me to easily do this. And I finally figured it out and I want to share uh, that with all of you today. And I'm going to be going about this using uh, Blender and ZBrush. But before we get started, I do want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, I did learn this method by watching two tutorials on how to create braids in uh, 3D programs. The first one is from this artist, uh, Nazar Nishenko. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. And uh, his video, Creating Braid in Blender. Um, I recommend that all of you go out and check out some of Nazar's stuff, check out his art station. He's got a lot of great characters, a lot of great designs, just really beautiful renders. Uh, he's a fantastic artist. Uh, the second video uh, I want to give credit to is this one by uh, Joseph Drust. He's a uh, Pixelogic, Pixelogic uh, ZBrush instructor and a uh, fantastic artist in his own right. And um, this is his video on how to create uh, IMM curve braid brushes in ZBrush. And um, the method I'm about to show you was derived from watching both these videos. So uh, if uh, my video doesn't make any sense or if it's too difficult, uh, go check these guys out instead. Anyway, with that said, let's get started. Uh, the first thing you want to do is come in here into Blender and starting out with uh, any primitive, go ahead and go into edit mode and with all the vertices selected, uh, merge them at the center. Then when you have that, go ahead and go into your front view. Uh, make sure that you have uh, increment uh, snapping and absolute grid alignment turned on. So that's what that looks like right there. And then hitting E to extrude out uh, a vert, go ahead and hold on the control button on your keyboard and just drag that uh, one blender unit to the right in a diagonal fashion. Yeah, uh, up two blender units and then one to the right, up straight up another two blender units and then to the left in a diagonal fashion to blender units. All right, and then you're gonna to go to the right side and you're gonna take this one and move it over one blender unit to the right and you're gonna move this one, one blender unit to the left. Going back into the front view, what you wanna do is select this entire curve, duplicate it by hitting Shift D, then hitting immediately afterwards, hitting the Z key so uh, to orient it in the Z axis, then hold on control and then drag that to the top until these two um, vertices are uh, aligned perfectly on top of one another. Uh, then select this area right here, go ahead and hit Shift S and do cursor to selected and then go ahead and change the uh, pivot point to the 3D cursor. Then with this segment selected, go ahead and hit S on your keyboard for scale. Hit the X key immediately after that. Then type in negative one on your keyboard. And that'll give you a perfect mirror image of that curve. Then go ahead and select everything. And right here in your tool palette, go ahead and hit remove doubles. All right, with that done, go ahead and duplicate this whole curve again. Again, snap it to the very top of your, of your curve and then select everything, remove doubles again. All right, next thing you want to do is go ahead and duplicate this whole curve once again, but instead of taking it all the way to the top, instead you're going to take it up uh, to the second vertice on your original curve. And then you can just hit Shift R on your keyboard and it will duplicate that action. Um, all right, we're almost there. And the way to make sure that this is um, the exact same shape, the exact shape that you want it to be, is if you go into your top view, it should form this hourglass shape. All right, 
Now that that's done, we can go ahead and actually make the uh, give this some uh, thickness, give this some geometry. So while you're in object mode, go ahead and hit Alt C on your keyboard and select Curve from Mesh, and that's going to uh, turn this uh, geometry into curves now. Uh, with that done, go ahead and go under your Properties menu. Go ahead and select Object Data. And right here under Fill, go ahead and select Full. Then down here under the Geometry tab, under Bevel, hit 1 under this first uh, option. And then under Resolution, go ahead and hit 4. All right. So you can see we've got the makings of a braid so far. Next, what you want to do is go into um, is hit Alt C on your keyboard again, and this time select Mesh from Curve, and this is going to convert it back into a mesh. Next thing you want to do is you want to go into Edit Mode, and we just want to clean this up a bit. Uh, there's a lot of geometry here that we're not going to need, so I'm going to go ahead and go into Face Mode, and I'm going to select some of these edge loops and delete those faces. And let's see, delete a few more here, and perfect. We want them all. We want all three ends of our braid to be meeting up with one another. And we're just gonna we're gonna do the same thing up here. So go ahead and select some uh, face loops. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change my pivot point back to the median point and I'm gonna go ahead and drag this down back to where the origin point is. Alright, next thing I want to do is I just want to make sure this is gonna align up properly. So I'm gonna duplicate this mess and mesh and just drag it up here and based on what I can tell it looks like this is going to line up perfectly. So I don't need that anymore. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete my camera. And under this object, I'm going to just name it uh, braid uh, underscore zero one. Now I'm want now the next thing I want to do um, is come up here to my uh, modifier uh, pe uh, menu, and under the different options, I want to hit uh, subdivision surface and I want to give that a subdivision surface of two, just give it a little bit more geometry. Uh, by the way, there's a shortcut for this. If you just want to do it uh, the quick and easy way, you all you have to do is hit Control-2 on your keyboard and it will do, it will give you a subdivision modifier with um, a view count of two. Let's go ahead and apply that. All right, we're all set. I'm gonna go ahead and save this real quick. Now we're ready to bring this into ZBrush. And the way I'm gonna bring it into ZBrush is with the uh, Go B add-on, uh, which I will link to in the description below. Um, but if you don't have that, another way you can do it is if you go going under here to File, Export, Export, Wave Object, then under here, under the Export Wave Object Options, you wanna make sure you have Check Selection Only and under here you want to uncheck uh, right materials and then you can just go ahead and name this what you want and go ahead and export it but since I have the add-on I'm just gonna do that because it's a lot easier um, that uh, OBJ by the way you can import into directly into ZBrush once you've uh, done what after you've exported it from Blender Okay, um, so now I'm going to go ahead and use the Go B add-on to get this into ZBrush. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, check, click on this button right here. And now that it's green, this basically means that Blender is currently communicating with ZBrush right here. Um, so right ar already, I've got just like a, the, the star primitive uh, preloaded. And what happens when I click this button right here next to the green sphere, uh, this braid is essentially going to replace that star. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And look at that. It's already, it's already been uh, made into a poly mesh 3D and it's already got its own poly group applied to it. Um, 
So the next thing I want to do is make this a little bit smaller because it, when objects from Blender get imported into ZBrush, they get imported very large. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out my Gizmo 3D tool here and just shrink this down to about 25% and the number below my Gizmo will give me an indication as to where that's at. If you hold down shift, it will automatically snap in increments of five. So I'm going to get that down to 25%, maybe even... Well, it's maybe even uh, 20%. Okay. And I hit F to frame it there. All right, now that that's done, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and duplicate this object. And the easiest way to do that is uh, holding down the control button and then just clicking on this up arrow and it will go ahead and create a copy of that mesh while masking out the other while masking out the original. Um, now what I'm going to do is come down here to uh, polygroups and this is really important for later on because we want all of our objects in our curve brush to be different polygroups. I'm going to go ahead and uh, right here this option, click this option, group masked clear mask and that's going to give the what's masked a new polygroup. Alright, now that that's done I'm going to go up here to the top of my mesh and under uh, display, if I can find it, uh, display properties, I just want to hit double so this is a little bit easier to see. Now I'm going to bring up my, I want to close these holes so I'm going to bring up my Z modeler brush so I'm going to hit B on the keyboard that's going to bring up my brush palette, I'm going to hit Z to narrow it down to Z modeler. Uh, there it is right there. Um, and you can hit uh, M to just immediately jump to that. So now I'm in my Z modeler brush. I'm going to zoom in here a bit. I'm just going to click on a point just so I can hover over around it easier. And shrink my brush size just a tad. Now while hovering over an edge, I'm gonna hit spacebar on my computer. I'm gonna hit close, I'm gonna hit convex hole, and I'm gonna leave pretty much all of these the same. And I'm gonna click and hold that edge and it's gonna close that hole. And I'm gonna uh, drag uh, to the right a little bit and just let go. And uh, now I can just single click these edges right here and it will repeat the last operation. Alright, so we're almost there. Since it's important that this object is all the same polygroup, I'm going to go ahead and uh, mask that out and then under the uh, polygroups uh, palette right here, I'm going to go ahead and click on group mask clear mask again and that will make uh, that the same mask. All right. Next thing I want to do is bring back my uh, gizmo tool here and I'm going to uh, well I'm going to control click on this and whenever you have your gizmo or your uh, transpose tool active when you control click on a polygroup it will mask out all other polygroups which is insanely useful. I'm going to go ahead and reset this and I'm going to bring this down to just the point uh, where it's penetrating the other side just a little bit. Don't want it too much, but just enough so that there's a little bit of penetration there. All right. All right, with that done, I'm going to go ahead and clear the mask, go back into draw mode, and up here under geometry, under the let's see, modify topology section. I'm gonna to go ahead and click on insert mesh and I'm going to insert uh, a sphere 3D. And I'm gonna control click on that and it's gonna mask out all the other polygroups. I'm gonna reset the origin point and I'm gonna shrink this down to about there and this is going to be like the, the tuft of hair at the end of the braid. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because it's, um, 
it's not important that it looks nice for this tutorial, um, but you uh, should definitely take the time to make it look um, as uh, detailed as possible. I'm just going to go ahead and activate symmetry here and activate it on the X and Z axis. Then with my move brush, I'm just going to create a, a quick shape. So nothing too fancy there. All right. So we've got we've got the components now to make our curve brush. Um, be sure you double check to make sure that these are all uh, separate poly groups, and also be sure to check that uh, this object right here has closed holes at the top. You don't need closed holes here or on this object here. Just the top of this object. All right. With uh, that done, you want to orient this the way you want it to appear on your um, on your palette or on your object when you draw out your curves. And typically, the way these uh, insert uh, curve mesh brushes work is the uh, what's ever at the bottom is going to appear at the end of your stroke, and what's ever at the top is going to appear at the start of your stroke. So, with that in mind. We, since this is going to be the end of the braid, we want this to be at the bottom. So uh, now let's go ahead and create the uh, insert. We want to create an insert mesh brush. And uh, the way to do that is you can either click B on your keyboard to open up your brush palette and go down here to create insert mesh. Or under here in the brush palette, under create, you can, do the, you can click the same button right here. And it's going to bring up a dialog box. Just hit new. And all right, we've got a insert uh, mesh br uh, brush, and let's go ahead and bring in a sphere. Make poly mesh 3D. And now, as you can see, we are able to insert that braid. But we want this to follow a curve. So the next thing we need to do is under our uh, stroke palette right here. We want to, uh, which can also be found right here. We want to go under curve and we're going to hit curve mode. And that's going to activate the curve brush. So now we can draw out a curve and it's going to, hey, look at that, make a braid for us. But we've got some problems. We, uh, the geometry is kind of um, not connecting to each other. So we want to fix that. So over here under our brush palette, we want to go down to modifiers. And under where it says this uh, tri parts, we want to hit uh, weld points. And if we go ahead over here and when our cursor is this blue color and we see the, the green dot, if we just tap on that. Oh, fantastic. And we're back. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so as I was saying before, you want to hit this weld points button. And when your cursor changes blue and you see that green dot, you want to just go ahead and tap your mesh or tap on that curve. And you'll notice now it's closed up those gaps or it's welded those gaps together. But it still doesn't quite look right. It still looks a little janky. So in addition to that, you also want to click on this stretch button. And under this overlap, you want to hit in, you want to type in the value negative point zero five, and when, after you do that, you want to go ahead and bump up the curve revolution all the way to the maximum, which is twenty five, and go ahead and tap on that again, and you can see it's now evened it out a bit. Uh, we can give this uh, a little bit. Um, we can uh, bump this down to negative point one. And go ahead and click on that. And that looks a little bit better. Let's even do negative 0.15. Go ahead and click on that. Yeah, and that, that actually works right there. All right. So the braid brush is actually looking pretty good. Let's just uh, go around here to check to make sure everything is working correctly. So that's working good. These points are welding together good. 
All right, now the next thing you wanna do is under your curve modifiers uh, section, under your stroke palette, uh, go ahead and click on this size button right here and under curve fall off, you wanna go ahead and bring this down to right around there and then bring this point all the way to the top. And what that's going to do is it's going to taper off your curve, uh, your curve once you, towards the end of your stroke. So now if I draw, on this, it's kind of hard to tell. Let me go ahead and bring that down just a little bit more. Go ahead and tap on that. So it's so that, there we go. So yeah. So now if we look over here. It's a much thicker up here, but as as it gets lower down, closer down to the bottom, it starts to taper off a bit. Let's go ahead and turn on uh, intensity as well. And it looks like it didn't make a huge difference, but it made a little bit of a difference. Um, but yeah, there you go, guys. That's how you make a braided curve brush uh, using Blender and ZBrush. Now, when you're fully satisfied, what you can do is, again, open up your brush palette. And you can actually save this brush. And uh, it will open up uh, your... Uh, you want to navigate to your ZBrush 2018 folder, and then under Startup, you want to go under Brush Presets, and just go ahead and type in Insert, or rather, Hair Braid Brush. Hair Braid Brush already exists. So we'll call that Hair Braid Brush 2. All right, now once that's done, go ahead and close out of here. Reopen ZBrush. Now when we open up our brush palette and we click on H, we can see we have a Hair Braid Brush right there. And it'll have all those settings that we uh, made for it before. Look at that. And there it is. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye-bye.